Now today I'm going to show you how I drew out this golden eagle, ready for working with those watercolour paints, of which by the way, most of the parts for this golden eagle will be released here on YouTube just for you. So let's make a start and let's get that drawing onto the paper. Now the first thing you need to consider is the paper you're going to be doing your painting on. Now I want to watercolour paper with a medium texture, but it's entirely down to you. I just like the texture within the painting, that's all more than anything, and the way that the paint lies within that paper. And this particular pad is a block pad. In other words, it's glued all the way around. As you can see right at the top, there's a little gap there, isn't there? So if you've got a palette knife, you can just slide the palette knife in there and slide it horizontally all the way around the paper to take that one sheet off. Now the project for me today, I'm gonna to be working on a golden eagle, I know, a beautiful bird. First thing I need to do, just mark across the printout and the watercolor surface all the way around. And the reason why I do that, because that then enables me to reposition that over the top when I need to later on. I'm also going to be using graphite back paper. Now it's always a shiny side down with this as well, so remember that. I've drawn it the wrong way around before, and let's just say it prints underneath the reference photograph rather on the watercolor surface. <laughs> yeah, I've done it. Now using a medium pressure, I'm gonna start drawing from the beak all the way around the outside of this lovely bird. I don't want to do anything on the inside just yet. I don't want to put any marks in there at the moment. And the reason behind that is because I'll be adding a background to this painting anyway. Just a little note about printing off the reference photograph. Do that on an economical setting. So don't print it on a high quality or anything like that. Because very often when you do that, the colours are very dark, aren't they? And because of that, you can't really see those details. You can't see the edges of the lines. Where you see the feathers, in this case, kind of overlapping one another. They will be obscured if you've printed too dark or too rich in colour. So print it on one of those ink saving settings within your printer. A little tip for you there. Now I want to border around this. So I'm going to use my mechanical pencil, 0.5 nib, and it's a 2H lead, so it's really hard lead. Then draw around the picture, creating a frame. Notice how I leave the tip of my pencil on that paper, then move the ruler while that pencil is in position. It just gives you a starting point when you draw that next line. Now, after you've painted the background, and yes, the video will be here on YouTube for you to watch, so look out for that, okay? Then we need to reposition that reference photograph over the top, aligning those little pencil marks all the way around so you know the position is exactly as you first had it. At least that way, the outline underneath will all match up when you start adding those details inside. Pop the transfer paper back underneath again. Remember, shiny side down. Make sure it's all the way under, because I've made that mistake before when I've not done that. And sometimes when I'm trying to draw a border around the outside edge, I've missed a line. Or you've missed part of the image inside, part of the subject you're trying to transfer through. In this case, I'm going to go around the edge of this bird again, just to make sure the lines are definitely there. The problem is if you press too hard on this, then you find that you put more of an indentation within that watercolour paper. And when you start to paint around this area, you find the paint will then lie within that crevice, within that sort of valley in the paper. I know it's a miniature valley, but it will create that issue. The problem with doing that around the outside edge of a bird, or any animal in this case, is that it can look like it's outlined. You don't want it looking outlined, because that will then look a little bit too cartoony. And now I want to start adding those very fine details, especially around the beak, anywhere like that, especially that nostril, I know. But look at them details, keep peeking underneath. Notice how I've got a little bit of tape on the top of this printout, so if I lift it to have a quick peek underneath, it doesn't move. Otherwise you'll have to reposition it all over again. When you work around the eye, whatever it might be, do so very carefully. Because sometimes I find, you know, when you start working with a mechanical pencil, which doesn't flatter much when you start working with a lead, especially when it's a 0.5 nib, I know, really fine. Ideal for something like this. Work around the eye, but make sure you don't press too hard, because if you press too hard, what can then happen is that your line may go slightly off course. And if that happens as well, remember what I said about them valleys, when the paint runs into the valleys, then you'll have a, an extra line with inside the eye. It's not too bad on the outside of the eye, but in this case, if it's on the inside of the eye, it will then be difficult to get that lovely blend effect when I'm painting the eye. And yes, another video which will be here on YouTube to watch. But also note that painting the feathers are solely for my Patreon members. If you are interested in painting the feathers, you'll find the link in the description down below this video. I'll also use your mechanical pencil as well, just to reinforce some of those details underneath. But don't press on too hard when you do that. Because again, you don't want to put too much pressure on that watercolour surface. The lightest touch, the better. And to be honest with you, my marks here are quite dark. Normally, if I wasn't filming this, I'd have them lines a little bit lighter than that. In fact, so light I can barely see them, but only just. 
At least that way around, if you need to erase any of the marks off there, it won't take much doing. But the harder you press, the harder it is to remove that pencil. Then you want to go around all the feather details, all the main structures really, within the neck, around the top of the head, all them sort of areas. And look at the angles these feather details are going in as well. So it's always worth kind of lowering the opacity within a kind of arty program on your computer. For example, if you've got Microsoft Windows, then you can use the built-in one, which is called Paint. And you can do it that way around, just lighten the image. Anything like that. So Prince lighter, so therefore we can see more of the details. That's what I do anyway. There's so many different ways of doing this, isn't there? So you get a very soft leaded pencil, or graphite if you wish. <laughs> and then cover the back of this in a soft leaded pencil and transfer that through. If you want to do it that way around, you can. Whichever's easier for you. But graphite paper is really good stuff. But the only thing is with it, after a while, they just get a bit old. And this particular one is now showing its age. You can see all the little lines and fine marks from all the years I've used this one sheet. And I mean years I've used this one sheet. There's a lot of marks there, isn't there? So if I get my phone in a minute, I'll show you what I mean, look, and offer that underneath, you can see all the scribings I've done through this graphite back paper there. See all that? As I mentioned, I've had this for many, many years. I can see a fish head there, look. <laughs> I've had this for many, many years. And there he goes, oh, there's a fish head. And because of that, it's really served its purpose. And they're not expensive to buy, they're really not. But make sure it's the wax-free one, though. You don't want anything with wax in it, really. Because then that transfers through to the paper, and they find it harder to remove. It's a little tip for you there. <laughs> now, how am I getting on with this? It's transferring quite nicely, as you can see there. Not too bad. I'm trying to put some directional marks in there as well. Kind of aid me when I'm kind of working on the details later on. The eye is, well, it's not quite round. So make sure you realise that when you start to draw this out. And if you decide to do it freehand, again, make sure you remember it's not round, not physically round the way that you see it. It's going to be round underneath, of course. Oh, and by the way, make sure that you put your graphite paper back underneath before you start tracing any more details out. Oh, um, there you go. That's because I've been demonstrating, I know. I forgot then. <laughs> did you notice that? I bet you did. I think that should just about do, to be honest with you. I've gone over the top of this with my pencil as well, but very lightly. This is that 2H lead, so it's got a very light line to it. So obviously, because it's a harder lead, it doesn't give a, a dark line. And that should be plenty on there now. I just wanted to make sure I've got as much of the detail or structure as I can see within that photograph. Now, I'm also glancing at my tablet in front of me as well, which has got the same photograph on that. And obviously, that's clearer than this is. So it's worth doing that as well. So make sure you've got the photograph nearby on a tablet, iPad, or mobile phone, anything like that. Just to ensure that you can keep double checking for certain areas. I mean, now down this area, actually, on the tablet, it's really dark down there. I mean, it's really dark, like a very deep, dark brown. But, you know, I can still see some details. Because I've lightened this printout, I can actually make out just a few of these feathers within that area. So I definitely want to paint those in. But they'll be toned down, they'll be darkened down and pushed back anyway, which is the way I tend to do things. Because we've got to think about shape and form all the time, haven't we? We really have. Put that little bit of a mark there. That'll do. So very lightly lift that, but further not the background tape. And then we can make a start on painting that eye. Once I got rid of all that masking fluid that's left on there to begin with anyway. <laughs> Now then, what about painting that lovely green background, the eye, and also the beak as well? I'll pop a little link to the top right hand corner of the screen for you. I'll see you there.